When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos. In this exam question video, we're going to cover this exam question, which comes from the indicators chapter. Well, I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. And once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, just press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. I'll read the question. It says, correct swimming pool maintenance requires regular monitoring of the pH level of the water. Question A, select the best indicators from the graph to check that the pH of swimming pool water lies between within the range of 7.0 to 7.6 pH. Justify your answer. That's worth three marks. Now, this is the actual graph. The lines don't look straight, but they're meant to be straight. So don't, don't ignore ignore the fact that some are thicker. Just imagine they're all the straight, same thickness. Same. So methyl orange, bromothalamin blue, phenylphthalein. You've got pH 1, 2, 3, 4 to 13. And the range is here. And the colors that change on the opposite, on the, on the other parts of that range. So that was question A. B, another part of the swimming pool maintenance is the adjusting of chlorine levels in the pool. Liquid chlorine is a solution of sodium hypochlorite, NaOCl, which can be used to do this. Upon addition of sodium hypochlorite to the pool, the following equilibrium reaction occurs. OCl minus plus H2O goes into HOCl plus OH minus. Stated reason why for the regular chlorination of swimming pool water. That's worth one mark. Explain how the addition of sodium hypochlorite will affect the pH of the water in the pool. That's with two marks. When you're ready, pause the video, attempt the question, and when then press play when you've done your answer. Welcome back. All right, so for this kind of question, for the first part, you should figure out what they're actually asking you for you to do. So select the best indicator. So it's saying the best indicator, not two indicators or one indicator, but one, uh, just the best one, just one. From the graph, check that the pH swimming pool, uh, swimming pool water lies within the correct range of 7.0 to 7.6. And we also have to justify. So we have to say why we've chosen that one. And that's with three marks. So if you look at the actual graph, you can see, okay, for this one, methyl orange, its range is all the stuff that's not these two lines, this is its range. And that range for methyl orange is roughly between a pH of 3 and 4.6. So 3 and 4.6 pH for methyl orange. The range for bromothalamin blue is between 6 and about 7.6. So this range here between these lines is 6 to 7.6 pH. And for phenylphthalein, it, it has about a range of 8.2 here and about 10 here. So this range is 8.2 to 10. And what we want to figure out is which one we can use to figure out if our pH is roughly 7.0 to 7.6. We can't really use the first one, methyl orange, because we can only figure out if it has a pH of more than 4.6. If it's yellow, it's going to be if you have a pH of more than 4.6 but it's always going to be yellow. So if it has a pH of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, anything above 4.6, it's always going to be yellow. So we want to have a pretty fine range, and we can't use it because it's just going to tell us it's going to be yellow, whatever pH is above 4.6. So methyl orange is incorrect, and that's the reason why, because it's not specific enough. Its optimum range is between 3 and 4.6. Same thing with phenylphthalein. Its optimum range is 8.2 to 10. So if it has less than 8.2, so this whole area here, it's going to be colorless. So we want to have a range of 7.0 to 7.6. If you put our tester our indicator into the water, and it's going to tell us it's colorless, it could be having a pH of 0, 2, 4, 5, 7. So it could be anything. So not a very good one to use. Whereas bromothalamin blue, its optimum range is 6. 7.6. So that's actually quite close. So if it has lower than 6, it's going to be blue. Uh, sorry, lower than 6, it's going to be yellow. Higher than 7.6, it's going to be blue. So if it, the color is not yellow or blue, that means it's in its good range. 
So we're going to use that Bromo of Thunder Blue to check it and not the other ones. And that's what I gave in my answer. That's what I explained. So Bromo of Thunder Blue is the ideal indicator. So that Bromo of Thunder Blue is the ideal indicator as it changes color to yellow when the pH drops below 6. So when it's yellow, it's when it's too low. And to blue when it increases above 7.6. So blue when it's too high. And anything in between is usually pretty good for us, or for the pool itself. So that was for the first, but we also have to state why it's incorrect as well, so why the other ones are incorrect. So methyl orange has a range of about 3 to 4.5 pH, making it unsuitable. And phenylphthalein has a pH range of about 8.2 to 10, which, which does not include the optimum pH range for the pool, so that's also not suitable. And this was worth three marks. If you state that bromophile in blue and explain why it's good, that if you so if you state why it's the best one, then you get a mark. If you state why the other ones are inappropriate, so not the optimum pH ranges, you also get marks. So that's three out of three for that one. Now for the B part, another part of the swimming pool maintenance is adjusting. So we have to in this case we have to talk about the first set state a reason for the regular chlorination of swimming pool water. We can't get that from the question, just need to know that we use uh, chlorination to kill bacteria. So that's what I wrote. Regular chlorination allows us to kill and control harmful bacteria and microbes that could otherwise accumulate in the pool. So we use that to kill off bacteria, and that gets you one mark. So one out of one for that kind of answer. And the second part is explain how the addition of sodium hypochloride will affect the pH of the water. So this is, was part of that sodium hypochloride ion, and we put that in water, and we have this reaction. We have hypochlorous, hypochlorous, Hypochlorous chloride. Um, I forgot the name of the, this one, sorry. And we have these, this is the most important part. We have hydroxide ions, these ones forming. Now we know that these hydroxide ions are things that make things basic, so this causes things to become basic. So we know that the more of that sodium hypochlorite we use, that will dissociate to release these hydroxide ions. And this will make it basic. So explain how the addition of sodium hypochlorite will affect the pH of the water in the pool. We know that sodium hypochlorite will quickly dissociate into, this was the name, hypochlorous acid. So hypochlorous, you don't need to, if you didn't know that, it was fine as well. But I obviously forgot myself. Hypochlorous acid was this one. So it will quickly dissociate into hypochlorous acid and these hydroxyl ions, which was our OH group, as soon as it comes in contact with the swimming pool water. That's the first statement. So now we've said what happens when we put uh, sodium hypochlorite in our water. It dissociates into these different things. And the next part was that we said that hydroxyl ions will increase the pH. This is what does to our pH of the water. And it will make the water too basic. So it will increase the pH and make it too basic. And then this next part wasn't required, but you can just say it as well. So hydrochloric acid can be added to neutralize the excess base. So this is what we can do to bring it back to normal. But what you get marks for this kind of question is you get marks for saying what happens when we put sodium hypochlorite into our solution, which is that it releases hydroxyl ions. And what, does, what do these hydroxyl ions do to our solution? They increase the pH. That's another mark. So you get two marks out of two for that. And where do all these questions come from? They come from these dot points. So the first one was identify and describe some everyday uses of indicators, including testing of soil, acidity, and basicity. Remember, in that video, we covered soil, but we also covered the swimming pool as well. So this question came from that one. And the other one was to do with you know, using these different indicators. So identify the indicators such as litmus, phenylphthalein, methyl orange, and bromothalmin blue, which were all used here. These were all from there. It can be used to determine the acidity or basic nature of a material over a range. So this was the whole range part, that they have their optimum range. And that range is identified by changing color. So this first question, part A, came from that dot point, And part B came from the one about describing the everyday uses of indicators. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.